Spotlight is proudly sponsored by HEC Media, St. Louis's home for arts, education, and culture. We are providing residents opportunities to explore, to travel, to dream. It's one of my missions to expose everyone to classically driven art. It's keeping the arts alive. A special edition of Spotlight today dedicated to the Regional Arts Commission or RAC. Meet two RAC Artist Fellowship recipients. One promotes reading through these unique boxes. The other astounds audiences with his extreme vocal range. But first, find out how RAC brings the arts to life in this exclusive HEC Media documentary. It's Sunday and you're watching the multiple Emmy Award winning Spotlight. Since 1985, the Regional Arts Commission, RAC, has been the largest public funder of the arts in St. Louis City and County. With the majority of their revenue coming from hotel sales taxes, RAC has been hit hard by the pandemic. In this HEC Media exclusive documentary, learn why RAC funding is so vital to our city and how it benefits the entire community. Art feeds our soul and ignites our imagination. The arts bring a quality of life to a community that is irreplaceable. We have amazing stories to tell in St. Louis. Old stories, new stories, stories that can transform lives. We are at Places, folks. Places, please. House to half. Go. Leonardo da Vinci said art is never finished, only abandoned. What he did not say is why. But artists know why. It costs money to create, and I think people forget that sometimes. It's a business. It isn't always the case that their art fully pays for what they're able to do. In St. Louis, that's where the Regional Arts Commission, better known as RAC, comes into the picture. RAC is the largest public funder of arts and culture in St. Louis. The Regional Arts Commission in St. Louis is doing something that nobody else is able to do. It's keeping the arts alive, keeping conversations and dialogue alive. I think that the Regional Arts Commission has been the angel of the arts community. I interact with people in the arts and academia. I interact with business leaders, economic development leaders, governmental officials. The folks I know know of RAC and the power of RAC. RAC has a platform and an opportunity to help grow the region's economy. It's a vital organization. It's important to this area to keep the arts alive. Since 1985, the Regional Arts Commission has been working tirelessly to bring vitality, value, and visibility to arts and culture in St. Louis City and St. Louis County. We receive 94% of our revenue from hotel sales tax earned in St. Louis City and St. Louis County. RAC is managed by 15 commissioners, eight appointed by the St. Louis County Executive and seven by the Mayor of the City of St. Louis. In its first 35 years, RAC has awarded more than 7,000 grants, totaling $100 million. I think the arts are very important to people in St. Louis, more than people would guess. In the St. Louis region, 94% of those surveyed rate arts and culture somewhat important or very important to their lives. But what many do not know is just how important arts and culture is to the local economy. In St. Louis, the arts mean business. The arts and culture sector in St. Louis is a powerful economic driver. It influences transportation, hospitality, and manufacturing. When artists come to our community, they bring us together from across the region. 
arts is an important part of our economy and our culture. Arts and culture in St. Louis account for more than 19,000 full-time jobs, contributing almost $58 million in local and state revenue for a total economic impact of $591 million. The presence of art is like creating an oasis, and that brings economic development, as well as improving the quality of life for all those who enjoy it. On average, 11 million people attend arts and culture events in the St. Louis area every year. That's more than all local sporting events combined. And even though the majority attending are from St. Louis City and St. Louis County, it's visitors who spend the most money. Compared to other cities the same size, the St. Louis region offers twice as many arts experiences. If you are a company looking to recruit talent to St. Louis, one of the things that will help connect them to a community is through the arts. In a tech economy, talent is the currency. And when you talk to them about what would it take to get you to move, it's not the 401k match. It's not, boy, you've got United Healthcare Choice Plus. It's a vibe, it's a feeling, it's community. I can't think of another way to bring people together that's better than the arts. With their vote, the people of St. Louis said, art is not a luxury, it's an essential part of our everyday life. On November 6, 1984, while most Americans were following returns from the presidential election, Many in St. Louis were watching to see whether voters would approve a plan to increase the hotel tax as a way to generate new money for promoting tourism and funding the arts. It passed overwhelmingly in both St. Louis City and St. Louis County, quickly followed by enabling legislation, creating a new organization to distribute the money, the Regional Arts Commission. I think the first year we gave away seven to eight hundred thousand dollars. Today, that figure averages 3.7 million, awarded both to individual artists and arts organizations. RAC's support of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra has been significant, over 13 million in the last 35 years. Now ain't it good to know oh, that you got a friend? While they do support institutions, they also support the individual artists being able to have some type of subsidy, even if it's small, to help with continuing to do your art, I think is important. But it's not all just a matter of money. The number of programs RAC offers St. Louis's arts and culture community has grown substantially. We have two programs that teach the business of art. Our Gio Obata Fellowship places college students with arts organizations for a paid summer internship where they can get real experience in arts administration jobs. Our Capacity Building STL program allows arts organizations time to learn and focus on their business and operations. The Capacity Building Workshop I believe it's really the first time for many organizations that they had the opportunity to work professionally and tackle some of these concrete fundamental questions of equity, diversity, and inclusion in their institutions. Many times with the smaller arts organizations, the leaders are artists, which is great, but then because they're artists, they may or may not be first in technology and, and what's needed to get the word out. The Community Arts Training Institute, fondly known as the CAT program, is a five-month-long program where artists of all disciplines partner with social workers, educators, activists, and policymakers with the goal of creating arts programs that are relevant and impactful in local neighborhoods across the region. I am an immigrant. I came from India, and I'm a self-taught artist. So I really needed all the help that I could get. And the community arts training program was perfect for that. Take it anymore. 
In 2014, in the painful aftermath that followed the killing of Michael Brown, Rack began looking for ways to more actively participate in creating social change, both in the arts and in the community through the arts. Equity and diversity and social justice are being talked about now in a way that they hadn't in the past. Centering art to have those sorts of potentially difficult conversations is a logical step. In 2017, the Regional Arts Commission launched Evoke STL, convening 100 meetings and conducting 2,000 surveys to improve RAC's engagement with the St. Louis community. We hadn't had a chance to have a conversation with ordinary people to say, how do you value the arts in your life? You know, what is the value of creativity for you on an ongoing basis? And then how can the arts come to bear to make St. Louis a better place to live? We've learned through listening how much more we need to value the arts from where we are now. We're asking different questions. We'll always ask the questions of how big is your audience? How many people are being served? But now we want to know things like, how is this innovative? How will this program transform lives, help people think differently or behave differently? We also want to know how will this program be sustained over time? It is up to us to elevate our thinking to meet the new challenges of what is required for us to have the just society that we all desire. If we can just be a different option, tell different narratives, and at least give people the choice as to whether or not they're going to participate in flawed systems, that's a win. To that end, RAC is increasing its investment in public and community art. People want to live in communities that are beautiful, clean, and safe. Jobs and money alone aren't enough to build community. Public art that engages people is part of what makes communities enjoyable and vibrant. It is the simplest way to reach people. You have people who come to see a large-scale sculpture or a mural or even participate in creating it who would never step foot into a museum or a gallery. It's instead of having people come to see your art, it's taking your art out to see people. It's just part of the collectiveness and the connectedness, I would say, of a community to things that may not otherwise be easily accessible. Art has a way to convene folks in our community especially um, and bring people together that wouldn't necessarily have an opportunity to connect. Constantly through conversation and dialogue is how we change the world that we live in. I care about these kids just as much as you do. And if I'm forced to choose between Mozart and reading and writing and long division, I choose long division. Well, I guess you can cut the arts as much as you want, Gene. Sooner or later, these kids aren't going to have anything to read or write about. At a time when public schools frequently cut funding for arts curriculum, RAC is advocating for increased and more equitable access to arts education. Historically, communities with strong arts programs in its schools tend to have higher education rates and lower crime. RAC's vision is a full creative life for every St. Louisan. We really want young people to have access to creativity and self-expression in their neighborhood. What we find in today's world, in today's economy, in today's jobs is you need to have people who are problem solvers, who are creatives, and the arts do that. Arts education is, is fundamental to thinking about how we develop workers for the future. There's skills that are innate in the process of art making and exploration. So things such as critical thinking, problem solving, empathy and tolerance, grit, perseverance, those things that we need more of in our communities and especially in our workplaces. RAC as a catalyst to ensure that St. Louis is entirely focused on ensuring that arts and culture are part of our children's daily lives is essential. 
Obviously, I think the arts make us more well-rounded as, as human beings. And the truth is, kids are being educated in the arts, whether they're having it at school or whether they're on TikTok. They're being educated in the arts. The question is, who's doing the education? That, that's really the big deal. Everything shut down overnight. And it was so funny. As things were shutting down, I was saying, oh, God, okay. Please don't cancel that. Oh, cancel. Okay. Oh, please don't cancel that one next week. Cancel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's lives changed in an instant. COVID-19 has been devastating to the arts community, and that includes RAC. With travel severely reduced, the hotel tax, RAC's main source of funding, dropped 75%. Getting back to pre-pandemic funding levels is expected to take at least three years. Despite that challenge, in 2020, RAC created an artist relief fund and the region's arts organizations rallied. They staged a benefit concert featuring local artists raising emergency funds for local artists. We wanted to do all we could to help our local artists survive the pandemic, whether that was pay a light bill, the mortgage, tuition, anything that was essential to their daily life. My name is Pia Renee and I'm a visual artist. A friend had told me about the grant. It was like a gift from God, you know? <laughs> Looking forward, post-pandemic, RAC really has an opportunity to reinvent itself. It allows us an opportunity to really think of the future of art and what that looks like and what are some of the infrastructure needs that we can help create now in order to bridge the gap in the future and make art as accessible as possible. Moving forward, RAC is going to have to diversify its funding. Partnerships are going to be an essential part of how we will achieve our mission and get our work done. Diversifying funding across the board is going to be the key to the future. Uh, I do think it will be important that we look to unusual suspects and new partnerships, figure out ways in which the arts can be applied to meet the needs of the community. It's time to think ahead. You have the individual artist that can do only so much. And I think that rack, because of how they give, how they're structured to give, how they can support, you know, both artists and other initiatives, I think they're in a perfect position to lead out in the industrialization of the creative arts space here in St. Louis. If RAC is to have a relevance beyond an ATM machine, the ambition has got to be higher in a way that benefits the broader community. What makes St. Louis unique is our people. It's the art we create and the creativity that we experience together. And RAC's job is to invest in it. Artists and arts organizations want a full creative life, not just for themselves, but for the whole community. And a strong RAC will continue to make this possible. As the leading public catalyst, for arts and culture in St. Louis. The Regional Arts Commission leverages the power of creativity to strengthen and enrich our community. Our community. Our community. Our community. Our community. The Regional Arts Commission is dedicated to achieving its vision of a full creative life for every St. Louisan. Will you help RAC champion the work of art? Visit RACSTL.org to keep up with arts and culture in the St. Louis community and to support RAC's mission. Scan the QR code on your screen to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. HEC Media. Recognized. Celebrated. Honored time and again for excellence in the industry. Find all of the award-winning content at HECmedia.org. St. Louis Primus Zone was designated in 2015. We are the largest of 22 Primus Zones across the country. This encompasses all of North St. Louis City and North St. Louis County. This is 200,000 residents, 25 zip codes, and seven school districts. So an enormous area that has not seen investment in decades. It was a cool project 
because it was a stark contrast to what was happening in the area at the time. We wanted to promote literacy throughout the zone. Literacy is so critical and so important as you think about the seven school districts that are represented throughout the St. Louis Farmer Zone. But promoting literacy through areas where people currently are, so meeting communities where they are on a regular basis. And that's why we are here in Lions Park in the city of Jennings in an effort to ensure that we are providing residents in this community opportunities to explore, to travel, to dream. We wanted to do the birds of wisdom. So we talked about believe and hope and inspire and explore and so we wanted to continue that theme throughout the Prima Zone. Well, the meaning behind birds and words, I went from music to painting children, specifically black children. So turning little black children into little black birds and putting them on cool trees and positive words and three birds are my three children. So what would I want my children to run with? So that's where the one word comes up with just peace, teach, love, like they can just ingrain just those simple things. Life would be better. And there's an overtone a family is an overtone of black children feeling value, like somebody deemed as worth painting in a portrait. Children in the city actually have something they can relate to. They know that, wow, he's painting black children when he paints his birds, so that's me. The, the word, you know, I can apply it to my life. You know, when you read a book, you can really dream of the possibilities of opportunities for next, you know, so it really takes you away from your current day to day. But it also exposes you to opportunities that you may not be aware of. So really excited about being able to do that through these boxes. You can find the stories featured in today's show along with past episodes and more at hecmedia.org forward slash spotlight. Love. It's about love, the push and shove, the glory of it. Love, He's a man of many voices, literally. Terry Barber is renowned for his expansive vocal range. The international countertenor sings from baritone to soprano. I love to sing music in several parts, and so some of the music on my recordings is actually choral works where I'll sing in different uh, ranges. And so I carefully choose the lowest and highest notes. You'll hear me singing as a group of baritones first, and people who know my voice listen to that and said, that doesn't sound like you, how, how do you do that? That's part of the fun of recording as you can really experiment and try things. On my tours, I'll sing something written for baritone, something for tenor, something for mezzo-soprano, and even something for soprano. That's one of the things that I like to do to keep the audience guessing, keep them on their toes. Extreme use of range, both pitch and colors to sing different genres is how I keep people entertained in my tour programs. It's one of my missions really to expose everyone to classically driven art and to create lovers. So my highest compliment in that category might be an audience member who approaches me after and says, I don't like classical music. I didn't think I did. I, now I think I want to go to the opera theater. Now I want to go to Powell Hall because you challenged my perception about what classical music is. <laughs> For me, it's also about the personal connection to the art. So one thing that I want everyone in the audience to do is to connect personally. Terry's love for music began at an early age. I think my mother sang to me before I was born. My father was a boy soprano as well and sang on the Admiral here in St. Louis. So I came from a tradition of singing around the house. I always was singing around the house. I don't remember a time when I wasn't. I started in kindergarten really being recognized and then when I was seven I started private voice lessons and when I was nine I was a mall in a mall in the night visitors which is a Christmas operetta. Today he tours the world and performs at the most prestigious concert venues but there is one stage that he'll never forget. 
I remember at one point early in my career, because I did my master's in England and had opportunity to sing in Europe already because of that, then I thought, I wonder where my career will take me. And it's one of the great perks of being a performing artist that travels because I have been paid to go to some of the most wonderful places. But stepping out onto the stage at Svetlanov Hall across the world, on the other side of the world, at their, what, what is really their Carnegie Hall, it just seemed too good to be true. Being one of the most sought after vocalists, it didn't take long for the Grammy Award winning ensemble Chanticleer to seek out Barber. I was offered a position to join Chanticleer, which is a group that, if you look at your career, there was a moment when I was in college when I thought, if I could just get into Chanticleer, that would be it. That would be my world. And I moved to California to join the group that is a multiple Grammy winning group. We had a world tour. It was 116 concerts in the year that I was with them. I was singing in my soprano voice only. And so it was really an extreme use of my voice. And after a year, I recognized that I had a very difficult choice to make, and that was to stay in the group or to go off and pursue my solo career. And I knew that my voice would do one or the other, but not probably both. So I made a very difficult choice and left and moved to Manhattan. And that choice worked out for Cherry. He appeared with the New York Metropolitan Opera and made his debut at Carnegie Hall. He also launched his nonprofit foundation, Artists for a Cause. And the whole organization is really about how can art be the solution to meet critical needs in our community. I believe that all students deserve an opportunity to have access to arts education. Pavarotti had a voice teacher. There is no end to the work that you can do. And there's no end to what Terry Barber can do. He released the rock album Reimagine Mercury and starred in the national tour, Mercury, the story of Queen's front man. Currently, Terry is in rehearsal with the powerhouse vocals of Elementrio. Their world tour opens April in Florida and debuts in Vienna, London this summer. And you can catch Terry Barber in St. Louis on Saturday, January 29th. He'll be playing at the Blue Strawberry with Jonathan Cummings as they perform the entire album of Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits. Well, the music's playing at home, well, my is waiting silently for me. Next week, students share their love of music and get paid while they're at it. Plus, a look back at writers with roots in Missouri. Thanks for watching Spotlight. Join us next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on KPLR 11.